Okay, so the analogous electric circuit has been drawn in figure two. Assume one dimensional heat flow, estimates the heat transfer rate per unit depth through the composite wall skipped. So the whole idea behind um, using electric circuits is that Q, right, in this case, uh, heat, behaves very similar to how electric current behaves. So in this case here, we have 370 on this side and 50 on this side. So the first thing we're gonna do every single time is we're gonna determine to which way Q is going to go. And we always know it's going to go from hot to cold every single time, right? That's one of the laws of thermodynamics. So you never get confused with this because you know that's always gonna happen. Even when you get to more complicated problems, remember it's always gonna be from hot to cold. Okay, so that's happening there. So if that's going over there, think about an electric circuit. What would happen? If we have an electric circuit, we have a resistance here, and we have a certain current that's going through here, and you know that that current is dependent on our delta V. That's the voltage, right? The difference in potential that we have on the two sides here. So if you guys recall Ohm's law, Ohm's law tells us that the current will be equal to the difference in voltage times uh, over the resistance. Right? Or if you want to think of it differently, difference in electric potential is going to be the same thing as the resistance times the current. So likewise, if we do an analogy, that's why there's an analogous circuit down there. If we do a little analogy, our current, which in this case is heat, right? Not electric energy, will be equal to the difference in temperature, which is our driving force here, divided by the resistance that we have according to the materials. Note that the driving force on electric circuits is the difference in potential energy, and the driving force in heat transfer is the difference in temperature. If there's no difference in temperature, there's no heat transfer. Okay, that's the first um, thing needs, that needs to come to mind to you. So if you guys recall, whenever we have two resistances that are in series with each other, the equivalent is just the sum of the two. So we have R1 here, R2 here, so the equivalent of these two guys, sum of Rs is just R1 plus R2. If we have two that are in parallel, we know that the current is going to split. So that means that the heat will split too. And in this case, the R equivalent to this guy would be to the minus one equals one over R1, one over R2. So we're gonna use that to our advantage and calculate what is the Q that's going through this guy per unit depth. So calculate the heat transfer per unit depth on this problem that we have in front of us. All right, so let's, first thing we need to find out. Okay, so to find a Q, we need to find what is Q, R, delta T, X. R goes for resistance, but we know there's different resistances there. So it might be easier for us to use Q equals delta T over R. It might be easier for us, right, to use this relationship here. And it generally is, okay? So what I need to do is I need to first find what is the um, sum of R's. If I were to have only one single resistance that would represent these four here, so this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, what would that be? Well, the next thing to do is to note the following. If these two guys are true, these two guys are true. That means that R, the resistance, has to be equal to, oops, sorry, this is not R, this is A. R has to be equal to X divided by K area, right? Just by inferring, just by looking at these two equations, by looking at this one and this one, you can infer that the resistance equals to the distance it has to travel, K and area. So we can calculate the resistance for every single one of these blocks. We can calculate the resistance for this block A here, the resistance for this block B, for this block C, oops, let's do a other color, block C, and then for block B. Let's do exactly that. So my resistance for block A will be X, so the distance it has to travel, that's 20 centimeters, which I'm going to convert to meters, divided by K, of A, which is 150, and by the area. And then the area, watch out, because this is something that students in the beginning get 
wrong a lot. The area in question is this area here. Okay, so the area that is perpendicular to the distance to the direction in which heat is traveling. Okay, in this case, the direct the area here is going to be one times something that we don't know. And that's something that we don't know is precisely why it's asking us per unit depth. Okay, and that's going to happen a lot on all their problems here. And when that happens, you have two options, okay? Because of this area, we don't know this area yet. You have two options. You can either put a big star, but it has to put a big star either way. You're gonna either put a big star and say, assume depth is one. And why do you need to put a big star? Because when you get to the end of the problem, you need to remember you did that because that's going to affect you. Or carry A with you. Okay, so what are the two options? I can either put here that this is going to be one meters, um, meter squared, which is convenient, or I can just leave that guy as A and just carry A wherever I go. Both are fine, both are gonna render the same result. You do what you think is easier and it should be fine. Okay, for me here, I'm gonna do the first one and we can do the next one later on another problem if you want to. Uh, so let's just put the units down. Meters squared, meters, meters. So we're gonna be left with uh, Celsius per watt. So this is gonna be 0 0.0013 Celsius per watt. Okay, so for every watt that I give this guy, it's going to change the amount of Celsius. Little, little difference in temperature. That's the amount of resistance you guys, this guy gives us. For B, same thing, right? So for B, we have 60 centimeters now instead of 20. Then we have the height of 0.5. So that means that the, the area this guy has is half of the area of A. Okay, so for B, it'll be 0 0.6 meters. Uh, conductivity of B is 30. And this guy is with 0 0.5 meters cubed squared. So the conductivity of B is 0 0.04 Celsius per watt. About C. Resistivity for C, it's still 0 0.6. Conductivity is different. Conductivity is at 70. And the area is the same as B. So C is 0 0.017.14. And D, what is the distance there? 30 centimeters. Area is the same one meter squared and conductivity is 50. So 0 0.3 meters, 50, one meter squared, what's? Zero 0.06. Okay, so what we have now is a little circuit that looks like this guy here. Yeah, our heat, our temperature on this side here is 370. On this side here is 50. So we know heat is gonna go this way here. And we know it's gonna come, it's gonna come through here, the whole thing. And so over here it's going to split. Half will go this way, not half. Proportional is going to go that, this way and the proportion is gonna go this way. And then it all goes through this guy here. So what we want to do now is we want to convert that, that circuit into something that looks like this. All right, so we need to find an equivalent R that combines C and B. So we just need to create that equivalent and then our life's going to be pretty much solved, right? So R equivalent to the minus one will be one over RB, which is 0 0.04 plus one over 0 0.01714. And you can use your calculators there to check my math, but I got, what did I get? 
I got 19, uh, 0 0.0, 0, 0 0.012 Celsius per watts. Okay, so that means that our little circuit will have our A here, then our equivalent here, which is the 0 0.012, and then our B here. And then if we have this circuit, we know that the current, in this case, the heat transfer, will be the same on all three of them. And if the same, it's the same on all three of them, that means that our Q will be delta T divided by the sum of R's. Because if we have them all in series, we can just sum them up. So this will be 370 minus 50 Celsius divided by uh, our A plus R equivalent plus R D. And this guy is 20 divided by, what did I get? 0, 0.0. And nine, three, three. This is Celsius, this is Celsius per watt. So this gives us a big number in watts or we can have it in kilowatts. So it's gonna be 16.55 kilowatts. Okay, so 16.55 kilowatts is what goes through, the, uh, through this wall in this given circumstance. But if we stop here, we would have a wrong answer. Okay, if we stop here, and this is what a lot of guys, a lot of people like to do, is stop here and that will give us the wrong answer. Reason being is this star here, remember? Remember that we assumed it's going to be one meter depth, but we have no idea what, what's that depth. So when we get to the end of it, we need to remember, that's why we put the star there. We need to remember it. That, that's going to have an influence there. Why? Because if you think about it, right, we assume this guy is, will be one, it's going to be one meter deep, one meter deep. But if it's twice as deep, we're going to be doubling this area. And if we double the area, we know we're going to double the Q. And if it's half as deep, so it's, if it's half a meter, then we're going to be half, having the um, area, which will have the Q. So this guy here is 16 kilowatts per meter of depth, right? Now you could, you could have seen this, the other option you could have seen is if you carry the A with you, like I said, if you do this option here, right? If you do this option number two here and you carry the A with you, what you get by the end of it is you get Q over A equals 16.55 kilowatts per meter squared, right? Because I have Q over A. So that means that if I send my A multiplying onto the, to the side there, well, I can break the A into Q over the depth times the height, right? And that's gonna be the 16.55 kilowatts meter squared. I can do this Q over oops, depth equals 16.55 kilowatts meter squared times one in height, one meter in height. So this one meter kills this meter squared and I'm left with 16.55 kilowatts per meter. So it's the same thing, right? Problem with the first method is that we kind of forget because we don't end up with the thing we we're looking for. The good thing about carrying the A with us is that we've always remembered that we're, what we're actually calculating is Q over D, not just Q, because we don't have the depth. Any questions on this one?